Are we recording? Yep. There we go. All right. So uh, my name is Kevin Stern. This is called Practice Makes Perfect-ish. Um, and uh, I say ish, and we'll see that. Uh, mostly, uh, these are slides that the students have read, uh, put together. I was the only kind of adult that uh, was able to make the January 8th deadline uh, for submitting, submitting this uh, abstract. So really, all the credit here goes to all of these wonderful students uh, that are listed here who are a part of our uh, October uh, campaign. And so just very quickly, we went through, uh, we actually launched two balloons, uh, one that was more uh, focused on Virginia Tech uh, payloads. And then we had a, uh, of course, the second one being a part of the Nationwide Eclipse Ballooning Project uh, that were more focused uh, on those. Um, some metrics here that you can see, I'll flip back and forth uh, really quickly. Uh, one of the ones that uh, is kind of critical for us is what altitude were we at? Um, we were at 80,000 feet versus uh, 60,000 feet uh, for these. We launched the VT balloon first because um, we wanted to really make sure that we didn't go too early uh, with our nationwide eclipse one and that it didn't pop, right? We've had some times where balloons pop uh, at 80,000 feet or so. We should also uh, preface this that we ended up not flying our vent system for any VP. Uh, so neither balloon had a venting system. Um, our students just couldn't quite get it together and we didn't have uh, enough confidence in it. Uh, to be able to fly it uh, during these uh, during this event. Um, so the things that really went really well, this is kind of our lessons learned that I'll hit on really quickly, is uh, leading up to this, we had not really done a lot of practice of launching two balloons uh, at the same time. Um, so kind of going back to this, we had a launch time of 9.22 and then followed by a launch time of 9.39 uh, uh, here. And um, a lot of times our timeline, we had kind of let slip. And anytime we said, oh, we're going to launch by 10 a.m., we launched by 1030, right? When it was not uh, that critical, we got it on time. Uh, we were really bad on not hitting like a time metric. Um, so what the students did is uh, in the weeks, uh, you know, they come in on a weekend uh, in the before we left and they would just do a dry run. They would pretend, you know, like they were filling up a balloon. They would hit a timer, said, yep, that's going to take 15 minutes. And then that person just had to stand there with a fake balloon just doing this for 15 minutes. And they said, all right, you know, nobody else, they can't do anything else. They can't run and help somebody. Um, and so they really, met, uh, uh, that's why I say that practice makes perfect-ish. Uh, um, and that's uh, the thing that went really well is that we gave ourselves about a 20-minute time window uh, and they hit it. Uh, we um, were able to launch uh, when we needed to. We got the balloons at altitude uh, when they needed to. Um, and uh, it was a lot of the students said that practice of doing it. We did it one time in real and it didn't kind of work, quite work out, but doing it just even a dry run, even if you don't have the stuff, if you kind of pretend and you go through that motion, you make a timeline um, that that really helped our students out. So that's the main thing that I kind of wanted to pass along here uh, is that um, kind of doing that practice uh, really, really can help out. Uh, things that also um, went uh, pretty well is that um, when you have everything, of course, payloads ready to go, um, you know, they, they uh, can get onto the flight stream uh, super quickly, and that helps out with your timeline. Uh, also, uh, these uh, altitudes that we have, especially the one we have highlighted here, 103,000 feet, uh, that's the maximum that we've gotten to uh, at our university. Um, so we were super excited uh, about that. And then certainly, too, with this whole timing thing and figuring out where things are going to be at, uh, we hit the ascent rate, at least our target. Um, of course, before uh, things started cooling down and we noticed some sort of, uh, slower ascent rates, um, but the, the one that we wanted to hit about five meters per second uh, went. So, and I think with that, I will probably end with this kind of summary of, uh, of pictures here. Wow, impeccable timing, Kevin. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so James, are you stopping the recording and then starting a new one each time? <laughs>